The Shubin Talks, Next Generation Imaging, Higher Spatial Resolution, is presented by SVG, the Sports Video Group, advancing the creation, production, and distribution of sports content at sportsvideo.org. Welcome to the Shubin Video Series on Next Generation Imaging. This one's going to be on higher spatial resolution. That's how many pixels you have across the picture or from the top of the picture to the bottom of the picture. Now let's talk about numbers first of all. In the old days of standard definition television we talked about the total number of lines including those that were used for synchronization. That's the black area that I'm showing. So in the US we had 525 total lines. In Europe we had typically 625 total lines. In high definition we stopped talking about the total lines and instead we started talking about the active lines, those that are carrying picture information. So we talk about 720 or 1080 active lines for high definition. In ultra high definition, we turn everything on its side. So UHD1 is sometimes called QHD or quad high definition or sometimes 4K and that might be 3840 pixels across in 2160 lines, which is twice HD. Um, true 4K is sometimes referred to as uh, 4096 pixels across, in, again in 2160 lines. And then UHD2, sometimes referred to as 8K, is 7680 pixels across in 4320 lines. I'm not going to talk very much about 8K in this. Now here's a common HD field camera lens combination and besides what you can see here there's stuff going on inside and the important thing is that there's a prism that's splitting the light into its component parts the red, green, and blue. Each has its own sensor. Uh, the lens mount is extremely well defined. There's optical filtering, even the depth of the three sensors, which are not the same, uh, is very well defined by that standard. The mount is sometimes referred to as a B4 mount. Now, let's take a look at the sensor. I'm only showing four of the photo sites here. Uh, obviously, there would be 1920 by 1080, uh, typically in an HD camera. And each one for a two-thirds inch sensor is about five microns on a side. That's five micrometers on a side. And that's not a bad size for collecting light because light has its own noise built in. And so you want to do some sort of averaging to get rid of that. So if you want to change to a 4K camera, one option would be just blow everything up and make it bigger. And sure enough, Lockheed Martin made a prototype 4K camera in 2000 using this technique and you can see it on the right and it's extremely big and it needed a special lens adapter so uh, that really didn't go much of anywhere except it did spark the 4K revolution. Now here's option two. This is a very common one. This is used by uh, say the RED cameras and uh, the Sony F55, F65 type cameras. It uses a single chip. The chip is about the size of a super 35 millimeter uh, frame. And if it's a 4K chip, and the chips have different resolutions, but if it's um, roughly 4,000 pixels across, then the red and the blue, because there's a color filter on the chip, have only 2K resolution. So they're really not much more than HD. The green has sort of 4K resolution, but it's very poor in diagonal directions. Now, because the red and the green and the blue are different, and they're all on the same chip, it's impossible to do proper optical low-pass filtering. If it's right for the green, it's going to be wrong for the red and the blue, and vice versa. Also, you need to do upconversion of the red and the blue, because they're much lower resolution than the green is. Um, so it's not really delivering 4K. There are higher resolution chips available, I should point out, and for the higher resolution chips they might in fact be delivering 4K. Now there's also a lens issue with this larger sensor. Again, the 
photocytes, the individual photocytes are roughly five microns on a side, which is good for averaging the light, getting rid of the noise. Um, they typically use a PL mount, which is the sort of mount that's used for 35 millimeter film cameras. They tend to use prime lenses, which are not zoom lenses. And the larger format means a narrower depth of field, all else being equal. And that might be very good for dramatic shooting where you want to separate the foreground from the background, but not necessarily so good for, say, news and sports. And if you want to do sports and you want to use one of those long lenses that I've shown, you need to use an adapter. And if that adapter is absolutely perfect and doesn't have the slightest flaw, it's still going to lose about 2.6 stops of light, or roughly um, needing 600% more light. And also, the bulk of those two-thirds inch lenses that are out there are mostly for HD resolution or less, and I'll show more about that in a moment. Here's a variation on that. Panasonic introduced that this year. They're using a one-inch format chip instead of a super 35 millimeter chip. And because it's closer to the two-thirds inch side, it's about halfway in between, then the reduction is just a 16 to 11 optical reduction, which is much less, so they lose less light. And by having the adapter built into the camera, that allows the use of lens corrections to uh, improve the pictures. Option number three is to shrink the pixels and still have a two-thirds inch chip but have 4K resolution instead of uh, HD or 2K resolution. And that's what Ikigami has done and Sony has done in uh, some of their new cameras. And there are three chips. They're CMOS chips. They are true 4K, so there's no up conversion. But they're two-thirds inch sensors, which means that by going to 4K, they have reduced the size of the photocytes from five microns on a side to two and a half microns on a side. And that raises some issues about sensitivity and noise. Now another option, this is option four, is to do a diagonal offset between two green chips. And this is what Hitachi has done in one of its 4K cameras. Um, they have four HD sensors. They're, they're all HD, so the red and the blue are just HD. The uh, green has two sensors with a diagonal offset. It means they need an extra prism element, and that splits the amount of light that's going to the green, so there is some light loss. And then they have to do the same kind of processing that's done on the uh, single chip systems. And there's up conversion again. And as long as there's up conversion, here's option five, and this is what Grass Valley is doing in its 4K camera. Uh, optically, it's basically an HD camera. It has three HD chips, HD prism, uh, HD lenses, but that means that everything matches perfectly, and if you're going to be doing up conversion anyway, it's nice that you can have the proper optical filtering before that up conversion. Now, why do we even care about going from HD to 4K? There are two theoretical main reasons. One is that it'll deliver sharper pictures, and the other that uh, some people think is a, a good um, advantage is the ability to zoom in by a factor of two to one and extract HD images out of the uh, 4K image. Well, sharpness is based on both resolution and contrast. So here's a curve, it's called an MTF curve, stand, uh, typically. MTF stands for Modulation Transfer Function. And it shows how much contrast you get at different resolutions, where you have uh, essentially no resolution, you get maximum contrast, and where you have maximum resolution, you get minimum contrast. And there are two schools of thought about the sharpness that is rendered by this curve. Uh, the RCA and Sony school of thought is that it's based on the square of the area under the curve. The RE and Zeiss uh, school of thought is that it's based on the area under the curve. One way or the other, contrast has a significant effect. And so when Sony introduced HD cam and they weren't sure they were going to be able to record the full HD signal, they decided to lop off the 
highest resolution. So they lopped off the luma, or the black and white part of the signal, at 1440 pixels per line instead of 1920 pixels per line. And they lopped off the chroma, or color resolution, at 480 pixels per line instead of 960 pixels per line. So it was sort of uh, what we would call 311 instead of 422. Now you can see on this chart, and I'm showing uh, sort of the luma here, there's a substantial loss in resolution, but there's very, very little loss of area under the curve. And it's the area under the curve that determines the sharpness, so there was very little loss of sharpness in HDCAM. Now here's an image uh, courtesy of Pete Luday, and it's showing that there's yet another issue about um, high resolution in 4K, and that's motion. When things are moving, you uh, don't get enough resolution out of it. And so here's a still from an artwork that was done by James Nairs. It's called Street. It was shot at a high frame rate. And I really urge you to take a look at it. It's available at the URL bit.ly slash nares and nares is spelt with a capital N, N-A-R-E-S. And you'll be looking at this stuff. It's slowed down to a normal frame rate and it's HD, but you'll go, wow, that's some of the sharpest motion pictures I've ever seen, and it's because of the higher frame rate. Now, I've shown this in the uh, other videos in this series, but here's the heading of a chart in the American Cinematographer Manual, and it talks about recommended panning speeds in degrees per second, but why not call it pixels per second, because there are a certain number of pixels as you pan across, and the more pixels you have per frame, the more frames per second you need to get the same number of pixels per second. So going to a higher spatial resolution kind of demands a higher frame rate for the same results. Here's another issue with 4K. Um, movies don't necessarily render their computer graphics in 4K. They might be rendering them in 2K, again, courtesy of Pete Luday here. And speaking of movies, let's take a look at the top box office movies. So the uh, most recent year for which I have full information is 2014. And of the top five movies, one of them was animated. The other four were shot largely with the Ari Alexa camera. And the Ari Alexa camera has less than 3K resolution, and that's not even counting the reduction for color filtering on a single sensor. So there doesn't seem to be much demand for 4K even in movies. This is a chart that was first shown by the European Broadcasting Union at the Hollywood Post Alliance Tech Retreat in 2013. And they're showing the improvement in um, pictures, uh, the perceptual improvement in pictures for going from HD to 4K. And they did it at two distances. The black line is one and a half times the picture height, which for a 56 inch screen is about 40 inches away, so really, really close. And the red line is at a viewing distance of 2.7 meters or roughly nine feet, a typical home viewing distance. And at the nine feet distance, the improvement is maybe a third of a grade. And at the uh, really close distance, the 40 inches, the improvement is maybe half a grade. And to get from typical HD up to 4K requires an eight-fold increase in the uncompressed data rate. So that would be 16 times the data for a one-grade improvement. Now here I'm showing that same chart with the vertical axis normalized next to a chart of going to a higher frame rate, which improves one grade with each doubling of frame rate or going to a higher dynamic range, which uh, increases substantially and doesn't necessarily even require any increase in bit rate. So you can see that the um, going to a uh, higher resolution, like 4K, doesn't buy much in home viewing, but we don't necessarily have to have home viewing. So here's something that was introduced at the NAB show in 2015. It's a 55-inch 8K 
display. Now, viewing that from a typical home viewing distance, we're not going to get uh, much improvement, but such displays kind of suck you right up to them. You can view them from a few inches away. Now, maybe that's not how we watch television, but that might be ideal for a doctor who's looking for some defect in some medical imaging. So there are applications where higher resolution is extremely important, uh, even if it's not necessarily the case in the entertainment industry. Now, how about that other option, the zooming in by a factor of two to one? Well, here's an image from a typical football game, and let's say we wanted to zoom in and see if that person on the left is tripping the guy who's running uh, towards them. And so we could divide the screen into four quadrants, and if we shot this in 4K, then theoretically we can just extract one of those quadrants. Well. The good news is that if we actually have a higher resolution image sensor, like those 4K sensors in the Sony and Ikigami cameras, then uh, we do get an improvement. The horizontal um, scale on this chart is arbitrary, the numbers from 1 to 11, but if number 11 is 1080 lines, then using the basic filtering that's required for uh, digital processing, in this case it's called a sync function or sine x over x, you would have zero contrast at 1080 lines. And zero contrast means everything is all gray. If, however, it's 2160 lines at number 11, then the contrast at 1080 lines, or HD, would be 64%. And that's substantially better. Unfortunately, Again, those two-thirds inch lenses are designed for either HD or less, and here's a very high-end HD zoom lens, and here's the modulation transfer function, 100 line pairs per millimeter, the middle of the chart is HD resolution, and it's not so good, especially at that 80% of the image height. Um, but with new B4 4K cameras, those options that I showed earlier, uh, both Canon and Fujinon are introducing uh, 4K lenses, and here is a comparison of the modulation transfer function between the HD lens and the 4K lens, and that 4K lens is going to make the pictures look substantially sharper, even if it's used on a high-definition camera. So that's pretty exciting news. Other videos in this series include one on higher frame rate, one on higher dynamic range and why it's not necessarily the same as bit depth, and an introduction to next generation imaging. Thank you for watching and please enjoy the other videos.